as I think I might have mentioned to you, when I first started doing local radio uh, in the 1990s, there was a great weekly publication in Mount Kisco, New York, called The Patent Trader. And I relied on it so heavily for local news. And everyone that listened to the station loved it, too. And it was kind of like um, a supplement. You know, we supplemented each other. And it's long gone. And quite frankly, most of the of the publications like that are long gone. So I said, this is really terrific that Newtown has this. And I guess, why don't you first start off by explaining uh, a little bit about the Newtown B to people listening on WPKN. Um, because when you're sandwiched between Bridgeport and Danbury, it's hard to fight for headlines or for any room in the dailies. Well, that's true. But, you know, the difference is um, the Newtown B is a weekly and we have almost consistently published every single week since the Smith family took it over in the late 1800s. So the Newtown Bee has been around for 147 years, I believe, this year. Um, we did have a little blip during COVID last spring when we went only digital for two months, but we're back to print. And um, I think, you know, the difference between us and the dailies and the regional newspapers around is that the Newtown Bee strives to be hyper local. We really like to highlight the people, the places, and our town government. And I think that that's where it's it's most crucial for communities to have a local newspaper. Um, you hear about news deserts all the time because thousands of these community newspapers have fallen by the wayside because they don't have the support that they need. And this is, I guess, why it's going to make sense that we talk uh, week in and week out, because I am striving to do the same thing uh, on the radio. And um, I, you know, when I uh, am on WPKN and I'm doing local news, uh, I could just as easily rip and read from Hartford. But for people listening in Newtown, for people listening, you know, in the surrounding communities, that's, you know, they could get that elsewhere. And um I decided that the Newtown B would be a, a great resource and you haven't let me down and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, what is coming up. So what can we expect in this coming week's Newtown B? Well, the newspaper published yesterday afternoon, it was on the street and probably the most, one of the most exciting things is that we have Newtown's first baby of 2021. Now, this is an annual contest that we have run for years in which the local businesses um, donate gifts, like dozens of gift certificates and bottles of champagne and haircuts and meals, all kinds of things to people who submit to the Newtown Bee if they think their baby was the first one born in 2021 or you know whichever year. Um, this year, we're welcoming to the community little Ivy Jean Favor, and I hope I'm saying her last name right, um, who is Newtown's first baby of 2021. That First of all, I, I appreciate unique names. That is a beautiful name. My, my daughter has a unique name, but I'll, I'll save that for another episode. So <laughs> what else can you tell us about Newtown's first baby of 2021? Well, she has two older siblings. Now, I did not do the interview, but... Um, it's our front page, bottom of the page news. So people are going to want to pick it up and read about Ivy and her family, um, her two older siblings. And she's very lucky. This little girl has not only grandparents who are still alive, but great grandparents, um, which you don't you don't all see anymore, um, especially, you know, with COVID taking people away. Um, so, you know, we're very excited to be a part of this. And we're so glad that they got in touch with us and and to invite her to our community. You know, before we move on to the next item, I'm assuming you have a couple more for us? I do have a couple more for you. Before we move on, you know, you've mentioned COVID now twice. Just talk to us a little bit, how how did the Newtown be weather the storm? I mean, you, you said that you always, the staffing never changed, even if the print edition wasn't uh, on. Well, that's on not the actually. Stands. That's not actually true. The staffing changed greatly. We had to close down the office for two months. Oh, in, wow. Um, April and May. And um, associate editor John Vocat and I opted to come in and keep it going online because we just felt that 
you know, of any time, this was when the community really needed to get news from us. So, you know, even though we weren't, you know, even though everybody was laid off essentially for two months, we felt that the two of us could at least get the vital news out there. And we had such great support from the community. People sent us pictures of what they were doing and, you know, all the wonderful efforts that they were making to get people through this. Um, and then when we came back in June, um, we came back with a reduced staff because businesses in town are still struggling. A lot of them are closed. A lot of them are, you know, the restaurants, the uh, mom and pop type stores, they're really struggling to get back. So advertising, which is what print newspapers rely on, of course. And um, radio. And radio. Yeah, it's, it's been slow because they don't have the money that they need either. So we're trying to help each other out as much as we can. Um, but yeah, we were, we were super happy to be back to print again in June. Um, there's just so much that we can get into the paper because we do strive to be hyper local, but we do carry uh, regional press releases and some state and national news is critical for Newtown people to know. It, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. And I do appreciate that everything is siphoned through that local lens. Um, you know, you, you, you have made it clear that you've tried to have the synergistic relationship with um, businesses in town. I think you did a great job of that through the holidays. I certainly shopped local. I, I know that you covered some of the, the way that uh, local businesses decorated, things like that. Yeah, um, our town held the first ever economic, uh, economic community Development Commission uh, held their first ever contest for businesses to decorate their storefronts. And, uh, you know, that was very successful. Uh, Sabrina Style and Sandy Hook was the winner with a very awesome window that they put out of her gorgeous formal gowns. Uh, you know, so there, there's things like that going on in town where, you know, the town and the businesses and everybody, including the Newtown Bee especially, um, but we do count on the businesses. We really need the support of businesses in order to get the news out to people in Newtown. Yeah. Now, Nancy, uh, the next item that you wanted to share with us? Well, um, we got a little bit of exciting news from the CIAC, which governs uh, interscholastic sports for the high schools. And it looks like they have agreed, along with the Department of Public Health, that our high schools can start their winter sports schedule with practices on January 19th and games possibly beginning on February 8th. Um, now, these are for the moderate and low risk sports. There are a few sports that uh, the DPH is saying, you know, it's just not wise for them to do this year, like wrestling, for instance, um, which is very disappointing for those, for those kids who are involved in those particular sports. But other sports, you know, using safety protocols in place are going to have the opportunity to get going on winter sports again. And that was a, a really big thing. It was hanging for a long time. Would they come back or not? So we were re very, very happy to report on that this week. Uh, let's see, what else is going on in Newtown? Oh, last week, the Planning and Zoning Commission met and they addressed a number of issues that are of great interest to people in Newtown. One of those is the possibility of a housing component up at Fairfield Hills. Um, this was something that was voted on at our referendum in November, and it still remains somewhat controversial. It appears that not everyone is clear on what is going to be allowed so far as housing and commercial up at Fairfield Hills. Um, so PNC opened up their meeting on January 7th to a public hearing and they are continuing it to their next meeting as well because they wanna get as much public input and they want to clarify to the public what it is that could happen up at Fairfield Hills. Um, the other two issues that they addressed, I'm sorry, John, go ahead. You were gonna say no, something. No, no, I, yeah, I mean, obviously that's a very uh, important discussion and I'm assuming this is all being done virtually. Do you know if there's any issues with people being heard? Uh, is the opportunity for people to speak out there? There is an opportunity for people to phone in. Um, many of the town meetings are being held in public, but they're not inviting the public mm -hmm. to come in. They're asking people to phone in or to follow them. Some of the town meetings have Zoom meetings. Uh, 
but people are can find whenever the agenda is posted on the town website the agenda also has the link or how to phone in to the meetings and public does have time to comment uh, there was not a lot of comment at the january 7th meeting um, but i suspect there will be more as people know that there is a second pnc meeting addressing this issue coming up the end of the month um, the other two things that they addressed um, there is a proposal for a development off of Berkshire Road for 15 homes. And, uh, you know, anytime that there's development in a neighborhood or takes away woods or affects wetlands in any way, it, it becomes something that people in the area are very concerned about. So again, that uh, whole hearing has been continued to their next meeting, uh, as well as our newest vineyard in town has asked for an they've asked the PNC that they do not have to have a special exception every single time they have some sort of special program up there. And that kind of went back and forth between people and they're looking for more input on that at the next meeting as well. So a lot of stuff has come up and a lot of it has impact on the residents in town so far as the character of the town, what we want, what we don't want, you know, how we think things are moving along. So it's really important if people can take the time to phone into the town meetings and, and really hear what's going on. And we're doing our best, uh, even with the reduced staff, to report on the meetings as best we can as they happen. So you have the, the print edition. And by the way, you're absolutely right. If, it, if it's something that affects the value of people's homes or the potential character of an area of town, uh, and you know from covering these meetings, it gets people out in person. So I suspect that It'll get people uh, out online as well. Um, anything yeah. else you wanted to add on that? No, not really about that. Um, those those were kind of some of the biggest things that we talked about here. I'm going to use my little cheat sheet here because, you know, there's and so much stuff that goes in each week. It's hard to remember what's <laughs> what while, happens. While you do that, uh, let me ask you, uh, you mentioned the online presence. Uh, if people can't get out to pick up a copy of the beer, they're not getting it. Uh, delivered to their house how can they do that and what is the online uh, presence how, how do you how do you get the Newtown B online well right now the Newtown B is at newtownb.com and our website is updated daily uh, we have it, it, it's a pretty nice website and it's pretty nice for the community or anybody who finds it because right now it's free um, but here's the, one, here's the thing, even though we, we always make sure that we get the breaking news up there, that we make sure that we have items of interest up there, you don't get everything online that you get in the paper. I mean, there are some things we, we really respect and are grateful to the, our subscribers and they pay for the paper, so they do get more content. Um, but we feel it's very important too for those people who can't or don't have the ability to get a print edition, um, that they have access to the really critical news that they need. And that includes a lot of our, our COVID reporting. Um, we're in close contact with our local health director. Um, uh, our first selectman, Dan Rosenthal, has been extremely supportive. So we do find out about a lot of these things that affect a great part of the community uh, up front, and we do get that online. So that's at newtownb.com. You know, my, my wife found an item, by the way, I want you to know how the Newtown Bee works. I will be in the spring doing a USA sport group with my daughter here in Newtown from something that she saw in the Newtown V. So that's how that works. Nancy, uh, I look forward to chatting with you week in and week out. If there's nothing else that you have to add this week, uh, I would just also invite you, if there's any breaking news, to reach out to us here on WPKN, and I would get that out as well. Great. Thank you so much, John. We, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that you are offering this opportunity to the Newtown B, and we thank you so much for letting us talk to you this morning. Look forward to next week. Okay. Thank you.